Hey everybody, welcome back to Funny Bug Bees and Woodworks. This is our YouTube channel. We appreciate you stopping by. As always, if you guys would please like this video, the number of likes a video gets or the ratio between likes and dislikes is what affects how it shows up in the search results on YouTube. So to help everybody find it and get this information out there, please like this video if you found it useful. And also, please subscribe to our channel. We come out with new videos constantly. We do a monthly prize giveaway for our viewers random drawing once a month to you, our YouTube viewers. Great way to get some free beekeeping supplies and some funny bug merch. So without further ado, let's get on to the video. All right, so you all came here today to find out how to trap yellow jackets. Let me quickly say up front that I don't condone trapping and killing any insects whatsoever. Um, yellow jackets along with most wasps are beneficial insects, uh, hornets as well. Um, they control mosquito populations and gnats and lots of other things because several of the species are carnivorous. So that said, I don't like to trap them, but I've had a lot of questions asked of me about how to control yellow jackets uh, around your beehives. We need a way to control those, at least that are in our backyard. And the best way to do that is with a yellow jacket trap. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do that. It's really simple. I'm also gonna show you how to make a bait that you can use in your traps that's highly effective and it'll do a great job at luring those yellow jackets away from your hives. Speaking of luring yellow jackets away from your hives, uh, you never wanna make any of these traps and actually put them at your hives because all you're going to do is lure yellow jackets and wasps towards your hives and not away from them. Uh, yellow jackets and wasps would much prefer to not have to fight for food, uh, even against honeybees. And so if you'll make these traps and set them well away uh, from your beehives, but still in the yard, you know, 20, 30 yards away, the yellow jackets you'll notice will visit the traps quite more frequently than they will come to your hives. It's just not worth dying to get some food if they think they can get it readily available uh, violence free uh, somewhere else in the yard and the bait that we use does not attract honeybees so works really well um, and and that's what I recommend that you do set it away from your hives okay the first thing we need to do is talk about the materials that you need the materials are all easily available at your local big box store uh, and and uh, and grocery store you'll, you'll need to make two trips um, so the first thing that you're going to need is a piece of half inch schedule 40 PVC pipe. Uh, you can get it in uh, uh, six foot lengths from your big box store. Uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, schedule 40 half inch uh, PVC pipe. Um, and I'll show you right here. Schedule 40 half inch PVC pipe. Um, now you're not going to need this whole piece unless you're going to make a bunch of these traps and I do occasionally make some so I have a piece laying around uh, and what you'll need to do with that is cut yourself about a two inch piece uh, shown here and I just did this with my miter saw you can do it with a hacksaw and, and actually some of you may even have uh, a PVC cutting tool uh, pipe cutter which you can use to to cut these as well but if not just do it on your table saw be careful because it's a short piece hold the long piece and use your uh, cross cut sled or your miter sled if you do it on your table saw or do it on your miter saw if you have one uh, but that's the first thing you'll need is a piece of half inch PVC pipe the next thing that you're gonna need is some sort of bucket uh, to actually make the trap out of. Now, you, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, you can use a water bottle. This is um, a three quart water bottle that I got at a local grocery store. Um, and those work really well. Um, but it's cheaper even uh, to go to your local big box store and get one of these. This is a uh, two and a half quart uh, mixing bucket and it's made to mix paint. You'll find it in the paint section at your local big box store and it even comes with, with a lid um, which we are going to use that's the second thing you need the third thing you're going to need is some cordage or baling wire uh, if you ask your local big box store where their baling wire is they'll be able to get that to you uh, or if you go into the hardware section where they sell the rope and other cordage uh, you'll be able to get yourself a big bundle of of this stuff and this is just paracord 
um, and I believe it's an eighth, eighth, eighth of an inch thick and I, I have it laying around for a lot of projects so that's what I'm going to use and we're going to use that to make a handle on our uh, bucket. Now the reason I'm making a handle on this uh, is because my local big box store sells uh, buckets with handles already on them. They're like miniature paint buckets, uh, five miniature five gallon buckets. They're one gallon in, si in size, excuse me. But, uh, but they don't come with lids at my big box store, so I have to make do with these. The next thing you're gonna need is a drill. And you're gonna need two drill bits. Uh, the first one needs to be just a little bit larger than whatever size cordage you have is. Um, and then your third one, or your second one, I apologize, needs to be uh, the outside diameter uh, size of your PVC pipe. Uh, this one is exactly the size I need. Now you can actually cut this a little bit larger if you have a, a drill bit that's slightly larger than this that's fine uh, because we are going to uh, make it permanent in place with liquid latex um, sealant. Now you can use this, you can use caulk, uh, you can even use duct tape wrapped around it until it's a little thicker or a little wider than your hole and just twist it in and it'll stay. Those are all the tools you'll need other than the stuff to measure out your ingredients. So some measuring cups as we see here. Let's go ahead and get started building this project. I'll show you how to do it step by step. And when we're done, we'll make the bait and we'll hang it up. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, drill the holes in this for my handles. Uh, well, for my handle, which we're gonna make using the cord. Um, most of these buckets have a, a thick upper rim and then a thinner sidewall. Let me get you a close up so you can see that. There you go. You see how the rim of that's a little bit thicker there? This section up here. Right there. That's where we're going to drill our hole into. And, and what we do is we drill two holes. Um, one on each side, opposite sides, and that's how we're going to hang up our uh, trap. So I'm going to do that real quick. Very simple, very quick. Drill our second one. All right, so two holes. Let me get you a close up of that. There's one. There's the other one. So this is going to allow us to put our cordage in here and make a handle. All right, so now what you need to do is cut you a piece of your cordage, your rope, whatever you bought to make uh, your handle out of. Personally, I like to get a piece about 24 inches long. Um, and the reason for that is because when it allows me to hang it at whatever height I want. If I want it shorter, I can just put a knot right here that easily comes out. Uh, if I want it longer, I can I cannot put it on it. So get yourself a razor knife. Be careful not to cut yourself cut you a piece of this cord, whatever length you think you're gonna need. Again, I'm using about a 24 inch piece. All right, your next step is to take your bucket and one end of your cord, and you're gonna stick that cord uh, through the hole that you drilled in the side of your bucket. From the outside going in, you don't wanna go from the inside out or else it's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to uh, kinda do everything correctly, so. Just shove your cord through the hole. I'll show you that. Okay. Then you're going to take on the inside, you're not going to tie a knot in both pieces. You're going to tie a knot in the end that's inside your bucket. All right. So get you a knot put in it. That's all you got to do. And that's going to stop it from coming back out on you. Do the same thing to the other side. Go into it from the outside of your bucket. Like so. Again, you're going to come from the outside to the inside. And then tie your knot in that end. pull that one tight as well. 
So this is what you should end up with. A hanging bucket. Tying it the way we did. The lid will still go on this. No worries. So that no other critters can get into it except for what we're trying to catch. Now this is going to catch a lot of stuff like gnats and uh, house flies uh, and definitely yellow jackets. Uh, and all those are things that honestly, while beneficial, I, I don't mind having less of at least in my yard. All right, let's go to the next step. Uh, real quick note, it, it doesn't matter um, what type of bit you use. What we're gonna do next is drill a hole to put through uh, this piece of PVC pipe. And it doesn't matter what type of bit you use. I'm using a paddle bit. The outside diameter of this half inch pipe uh, is just over three quarters of an inch. It's probably seven eighths of an inch. So if you have a seven eighth inch bit, that'll work. If all you have is a one inch bit, that will work fine too, because like I said, we're gonna seal this in place with liquid latex, caulk, thicken it up with duct tape, however you can to, to get it to stick. So that's what I'm gonna use as a paddle bit. All right, so where you put the hole for your uh, wasp entrance is kind of important. Do not put it down low on this because we're going to fill this up a, about probably half halfway with uh, with a liquid bait that's just gonna drain out, of course, if you put your, your entrance hole low. So come up way high on this. Uh, near the bottom of that rim that I showed you would be a good spot to put it. Um, and, or, or a little bit down, it doesn't matter, about an inch and a half down from the top is where I'm gonna do it. So once you decide where to, where to put it, just take your drill and make you a hole. <laughs> All right, so the paddle bit makes quick work of that, and I like the hole that it cuts. It's pretty, pretty exact, as you can see. Uh, as you can see, my hole is a little bit larger than my PVC because all I had was a one inch paddle bit, and like I said, this PVC pipe is about seven eighths of an inch. So what you need to do next is just grab your caulk liquid latex uh, whatever you're going to use, even a hot glue gun uh, works perfectly well. And we're going to glue the PVC halfway into that hole that we just drilled like so. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my liquid latex and I'm going to put a thick bead all the way around this, about halfway up it or halfway down the length of it. like so. Then you're going to take that and slide it into the hole until that makes contact and it'll help hold it there for you so it doesn't fall out. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my liquid latex and I'm going to put another bead around it on the outside, a thicker bead that's actually going to really kind of seal this and glue it in place. This liquid latex is slightly corrosive to plastics. So it's gonna, it's kind of like model cement almost. It kind of melts the plastic a little bit. If it falls out, just put it back in, glue it really well. That's all there is to it. Now, what I'm gonna do, it takes about 20 minutes or so for this uh, caulk to set up enough to where you can work with it. After it sets up, I'll go around and do another bead on the outside and then I'm gonna do a bead on the inside so that this is completely sealed from rain. And just a quick tip, uh, with rain, you don't want this PVC angled up like so because when it rains, rain is gonna go down through the tube and into your trap and dilute your liquid. So before it dries, take it and purposely tilt the outside of it down just a hair so that water can't get in it when it rains. And that's how I'm gonna let it dry. So we'll come back when that sets up, we'll put in a couple more beads on it and we'll move to the next step. 
Okay, so we've let our seal, our sealant uh, set up and that's good to go now. It's sealed from outside. Um, the last thing I'm gonna do, since I'm using uh, paracord, which is nylon, is to get rid of these frayed ends and you just use a lighter to do that. It's pretty easy. Cleans everything up. There we go, just like so. Easy peasy. Uh, be careful when you're doing this if you've never done it before because when it melts it turns into basically a uh, napalm. Uh, it will stick to your fingers and it is very hot. So uh, if you don't have any experience with that, just let it cool naturally. I like to pinch it though so it gets nice and tight. Um, so what we've got now is a trap with a hanging strap. Uh, an entrance hole for the bees to, or excuse me, for the yellow jackets to come in and out, as you can see there. Uh, we've got a lid, and the next thing that we're going to need uh, to do is put on, uh, or put together uh, our recipe, uh, which is going to attract uh, our yellow jackets. All right, everybody, so what we've got is one cup of close to boiling water as hot as I want to get it. And we have a quarter cup of white table sugar. Uh, sugar. We're going to add the table sugar to the water and we're going to stir it until it's dissolved. We want this sugar to go well into solution so that uh, it completely dissolves and doesn't recrystallize out from the solution in your trap. And the hotter the water you use, the faster the step is, which is why I said go with boiling water or near it. Careful, don't burn yourself. Okay, so take the lid off your trap. Take the one cup of water with the dissolved sugar and put it in the bottom of your trap. Like so. The next thing you're going to need is one cup of apple cider vinegar. One cup of apple cider vinegar, add that directly to your trap. Next, you're going to take the peel of one banana. Just peel the whole thing, put it into your trap. Take off the paper if you like, if it has a label. Banana peel into your trap. Next, get your banana extract. And like I said, if you don't have this at your local grocery store, that's fine. Don't order it online. It's not necessary. The banana peel and the apple cider vinegar is honestly all you, that you'll need. Um, I just find that this works really, really well. Um, and so I keep a bunch of it. Well, not a bunch. I usually keep a bottle at the house. But um, anyway, about a teaspoon. Oh yeah, definitely banana smelling. One teaspoon into the trap, give that a stir. And now what you're gonna do is take three more cups of water, just plain water, and add it to what you've already put in. There you go. So, your recipe is a quarter cup of sugar, just white table sugar, one cup of apple cider, apple cider vinegar, one banana peel, one teaspoon of banana extract, and four total cups of water. 
one cup that you heated up and melted the sugar into or dissolved the sugar into and three additional cups that you've added into your trap. And then all you do is take the lid, put it on your trap, and now that's completely sealed. This is ready to hang. Uh, as you can see, these paint buckets that I get are paint mixing buckets. They're two and a half quart, um, which if you're overseas is, uh, oh gosh, how many? That's two liters, uh, two and a half quarts, 64 ounces. Um, and you can see that the recipe as we've done it fills it up to about the one liter or 32 ounce mark, which is a quart, um, which is just about, I don't know, 35 or 40% of this. So this is ready to hang. Uh, we're gonna take it outside and hang it up and then we'll come back uh, in 24 hours and see if we've got any interest in, the, in, in this. Right now it's January. Uh, I know there are a lot of yellow jackets out though because I see them at the open feeders that I have out for my bees right now. Uh, and I don't mind those coming to my open feeders. The bees usually so far out, well not usually, they do so far outnumber the yellow jackets that having yellow jackets at your open feeders with bees is inconsequential. Um, I'm just kind of doing this for informational purposes because I actually don't mind that yellow jackets are in my bee yards. My, my hives are healthy and, uh, and not prone to being taken over by yellow jackets. Um, so let's go get this hung up. Okay, as you guys can see, I've actually hung it up where one of my open feeders is for my beehives uh, just because I know yellow jackets frequent here and actually one just flew they're flying into the entrance right now there's one on top of it I don't know if you can see him or not he's right there on the lid so literally within a minute they're already showing interest in this so let's give it 24 hours and we'll come back tomorrow and check it out gotten their interest up so as you guys can see in the video there there's a ton of yellow jackets coming to this trap um, but I wanted to have a quick discussion with you guys and, and you guys feel free to to comment down below um, and I'll reply to I try to reply to every comment on this channel but a couple of things we want to talk about before we trap um, yellow jackets is number one are you going to kill a yellow jacket nest by trapping them with these traps the answer to that is no um, you're going to kill every yellow jacket or every yellow jacket that finds the trap but yellow jacket nests contain up to 5,000 individual yellow jackets they have multiple queens unlike honeybees and so their brood rates I believe are relatively unaffected by the number of yellow jackets that you trap with these. Uh, that's the first thing. So are, are you going to kill a yellow jacket nest and solve your problem by putting out these traps? I don't believe that you are. Number two, do you want to kill yellow jackets? They're an extremely beneficial insect. Um, they are predominantly carnivorous. They eat other insects, uh, specifically the larval stages of other insects. For instance, one of their main food sources is common housefly larvae that they find outside. Uh, they also eat gnat larvae, which I can't stand grass gnats. Uh, they eat those. Um, they will also predate on the caterpillar stage of a lot of garden pests. So they actually, if you're a gardener, you definitely don't want to kill these things. You want them around and all of the other wasp species as well because they eat these caterpillars. Um, and if we're constantly killing them, we lose that ecological balance around us. Are they a good way to lure yellow jackets away from your beehives? Absolutely. If you put this trap up somewhere else, as you can see, I put it right there by a feeder, and of course they're swarming to it, but um, I would normally, if I were going to do this, put it farther away, away from uh, my feeders and away from my hives so that they're attracted that direction. Um, 
there's one other thing that I that I don't really understand. The the most yellow jackets I've ever seen killed inside one of these traps on any video I've ever seen on them is a, is maybe a couple of hundred. And again, like I said, there's 5,000 individuals in a hive with multiple queens all laying a uh, new brood. Um, so they're going to it's not going to affect them. But this is the issue. Just like uh, most other insects, uh, social insects like bees and wasps and hornets, uh, yellow jackets find a food source and then will go back and report its location. You know, I believe to other members of the of the of the colony uh, of the uh, of the nest and bring them back. But this is what I don't understand, and and this is the problem I see in this: the yellow jacket that finds this trap is going to try to get inside it and when it does it dies because it can't get out it attempts to land falls down in the fluid um, and, and dies um, so it can't go let everyone else know that it found this food source so I think when you put these out um, you're just not doing a whole lot uh, that said I'm interested to hear your guys's comments on this I'm interested to know whether you've used these types of traps before whether they worked for you to kill an entire nest I'm doubting it but I'm not gonna call nobody a liar so um, so I'd like to hear your input anyway that's the end of this video please like the video for us it helps get it into search results when people are looking up uh, uh, videos on YouTube uh, and helps us get more views uh, please subscribe to us if you have not already Make sure you're a subscriber. It's the only way to get involved in the monthly free prize giveaway that we do. Um, for our subscribers, we have a random drawing uh, where we give away beekeeping supplies and funny bug merchandise. So definitely subscribe to us, like the video, post your comments below. We'd love to hear from you and interact with you, and we'll talk to you in the next video.